All right, everybody's wanting to see some backing up. Let's see how she does. She's all nervous. She don't like backing up. I usually take care of it. We're here in Ogden, Utah. I'll show you. Might be a little noisy, sorry. She's got to put it in spot 77. And she's got the tandems all the way back. So. And she fucked it up already. Yeah, she don't like backing up. Not at all. There you go. She had straightened that thing out a little bit. She did her cut wrong. But having the tandems all the way back, she has a good pivot point in the back. She doesn't have to worry about too much trailer swing, so she can she can easily put this in the hole. She's got her, she's already got her wheels cut. She'll have to cut a little bit harder though. She's a little bit out of practice. There you go. It's going. No, a little bit more cut. trying to stay in the shadow of the truck because the sun's all bright. Okay, she was going to hit that central trailer back there. Fucking idiots. You wanna go around, dummy? Go ahead. Fucking swift. What's the matter? Y'all nervous? Yeah. I almost had it. You just gotta cut it a little bit harder. Remember, the tandems are all the way back. I mean, you got the pivot point back there, you know what I mean? You gotta cut it a little sharper, a little longer. There you go. <laughs> She's been driving a year already. She's probably backed up like four times. I shouldn't have enabled this behavior. There you go. Now she needs to straighten it out. There you go. When you got the tandems all the way back and you got plenty of space, that's the easiest way to back up. You don't have any trailer swing in the back. Oh, you could have made it. I need to start forcing her to do more backup, so. Too much. Straighten it out. What are you doing? She keeps looking at me. She's so nervous. <laughs> See how she's overcorrecting? The wheels are turned all the way, stuff like that. Gonna do, do another little pull up here. And I'm just saying this stuff. I'm not criticizing her. I'm just. Anybody that is wondering how to back up a trailer. Usually when you get in with a truck this size, a lot of times minimal correction is needed in a situation like this. See how she's all jacked up all over the place, turning the wheel back and forth. Usually you don't need to do it that bad. She's pretty straight. Should be all right. She's gonna do another pull up though, try to get it in the center of the spot a little bit better. Which is good, you know. You're not in school. There's no, uh, there's no fail. Unless, the only fail you have out here is if you hit something. That's it. Take an hour to back that thing up. Who cares? But as long as you put it in that hole correctly, you're good. Always remember that.
There's no competition. It's not a contest. You just get it in the hole safely. Do it correctly. See, there she goes. Look at that. Now, you see the concrete strip along here. You got to put the landing gears on that for weight. When you drop the landing gears on a loaded trailer, you got to put them on the concrete. Perfect. <laughs> Good job. You get a granola bar for that. Good job. And a slap on the ass. Go ahead and pop the thing. Now, if anybody wants to know how to unhook a trailer, let's do that. You want to film unhooking the trailer? You got three basic parts to your un unhooking the trailer. As soon as you've uh, parked it, you, know, you just double check that your landing gears are on the concrete. Some yards don't have them, you don't have to worry about it. You park good in the spot, all that stuff, so you're good to go. All your brakes are popped, yes. right? So, you got three basic components to unhooking your trailer. And you can do them in the order. When you hook up to a trailer, you get out, you can hook up your airlines, get underneath, check that your fifth wheel's hooked up, and then you can roll up your landing gear. Start from front to back, that's how I do it. When I get out to unhook a trailer, I work back to front, right? And then you can always double check your stuff afterwards too. But, here, you can watch. That way we don't have no noise. When you unhook a trailer, come back into the landing gear. If you ever hit rain or anything like that, if you got this thing tucked up underneath, a lot of times as you go down the road, it kicks water. And you get a pool of water inside of this thing. A lot of guys will come over, take it like this, and just put it right in, and then they fling it. And all that water shoots out, and you get a big old piss spot right on your pants. <laughs> right? That's disengaged. You got like a MIG. It's like the granny gear, you know, you got to flip it a thousand times, but usually when a trailer's loaded, say so you got to roll it down, you got to roll it up a little bit, something like that, you got to do that a thousand times just to get it to go an inch. But then you push it in, that's engaged, right? And this way, you get the two finger technique, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Some guys out there know what I'm talking about, the two finger technique, right? <laughs> This one, we're out in warm weather, the grease in the landing gear is uh, loose, you know, it's warmed up. So this one, so when we picked this up in Virginia, I was cranking it like crazy, almost two-handed cranking it because the grease was all stiff enough. So, all you gotta do is wind this thing down. Now, as soon as you get it on the ground, I give it, as soon as the landing gear touches the ground, I usually give it like one extra little crank. And then, a lot of guys do this, and I don't know why, Engage it, let it hang. A lot of guys will take it and they'll tuck it back up underneath here while the gear is engaged. And what happens is the yard jockeys they end up dragging this thing around a little bit. This thing it gets wedged up underneath here and you can't get it back out. For all the rookies, pull it out, disengage it. Okay? That's enough. Let it hang. That's it. Alright? You can get underneath a little bit. You can see the fifth wheel, all right? You gotta pull the pin. This one's pretty easy, okay? So your fifth wheel is disengaged now. Then, come right up here. Disengage your airline. Your brakes are pulled, so you're not gonna get a big old blow out of air. A lot of guys, they might, they might even leave their airlines just hanging if they're gonna go buzzing around. But sometimes, depending on what kind of airlines you got, you've got the long rubber hoses, they can get in between your catwalk. You even get caught up in your drive line. So you want to be careful of that. Always put them up properly. <laughs> you get a shot afterwards. Right. All right. It's all hung up. So this is where.
never be in a rush. We're here. If you're dropping the load successfully, you're going to get paid, right? So you always come back, make sure your landing gears are down. You can even look over. Make sure your other one's down too. Sometimes, with shitty trailers, that landing gear may not have uh, dropped. You just look at this one, drive away, trailers will bong on the ground all of a sudden. So, how do I know this? Because <laughs> I've worked at a lot of shitty trucking companies that have <laughs> a lot of shitty equipment and their landing gears don't work. So, hold your fifth wheel, right? Right. Got your airlines hung up, everything's cool. You can even check your reefer at this point. Make sure when you're leaving this trailer here, everything's done. I know it's already fueled up. Tandems are pulled, it's in the spot good, it's on the concrete, everything's done. So we're ready to pull out. Do you like to pull out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Alright. So I will watch you pull out. Oh. Oh, 243. Wasn't it? Um, 234? Alright. Oh, there's a 120. There's a 120, 206. Oh, that's it right here. It's this one right in front of us. That's the one we're getting. 243? No. Yeah, 120206. One, the number on the trailer right there. So anyway, we'll watch her uh, go ahead and disengage from the trailer. She's gonna drop the airbags. Might get a little noisy. But you can watch this thing come out here. Dropping the airbags. What she did right there, she stopped momentarily while the truck was still underneath the trailer just in case something happened that the trailer dropped, it could still drop onto the frame of the truck and you could save the trailer, just in case. As soon as she pulled out though, you could see the trailer sat down right and it was all good to go. So now she's gonna hook up to this trailer over here and go watch that. All right. So she's gonna back up to this trailer. See, look at this. But it's an empty trailer, it's sitting on asphalt, not a big deal. But it should, that's the yard goat, the yard jockey, he didn't put it in the right spot. See, look at her, she's coming up to it. Her airbags are back up so she can get underneath the trailer good. Now, we're gonna see if she actually gets the fifth wheel flat. All right, I'll show you this real quick. You see how there's a little bit of gap in there. She could actually hook up to this. But at this point, you can see a little bit of a little bit of gap in the fifth wheel. So what we would do, get my gloves out again. Just want to drop the landing gears down a little bit. Now you see this? That's exactly what I was talking about. That handles up. If the landing gear are under pressure at all, you would not even be able to get that. goes boom Just give it a tug all right that was good enough so I'll show you how to hook the trailer back up you can see it's an older trailer it's a 2012 you can always tell by the numbers on it when it says 12 that's 2012 so all right you get to film me again Gave it a tug, right? Now this is an older style landing gear. Actually pulling it out engages it. Pushing it in puts it in granny gear. Oh. But you gotta, right in the middle makes it loose. So this one you gotta fuck with it a little bit. Two finger technique. You know what though? I didn't do my system. 
fucked up. Oh yeah? Why are you just starting in front and work back? Oh. I fucked up. I fucked up. Most of the time, you get about 30 cranks out of a landing gear to get it up or all the way down. Alright, so starting over here again. You hooked up, gave it a tug test. Usually at that point you get right out, work your first thing first. Blue line, so you already got them lined up too. The blue line always goes over here on the far side. So, boom, plug, all your electrics, red plug. <coughs> primary air. I already got the lights on and hazards on. Okay. At this point, the tractor brakes are pulled. You want to push in the trailer brakes to engage air into the trailer with some pretty leaps. You know, make sure you hear air going all the way through the system and stuff like that. Also make sure you have good connections up here. You don't have any air blowing out here too. But at this point, when you put air through the trailer, uh, brake chambers, all that kind of stuff, it's, or if there's a brake in an airline back there or anything, that's where you'll hear it. Also, you hear some hiss coming out back there. If it doesn't go away after a minute, like the air ride's filling up on the trailer and stuff, that's where you know you got a problem. What I'll do... Pushed in the trailer brakes. Now, for the reefer, turn it on, make sure it starts at least. They want you to do a pre-trip on every one. Go on this, starting up, or I'll show you. Now you start working down your trailer, go out by a tire thumper. I've had this old pry bar forever, I don't know why. I've always used it as a tire thumper, it's just an old piece of pipe. Come back, pump your tires. There's also a thing, make sure you get a good ping out of the tire. You hear that? Yeah. You know, like a tight drum. That's what you want. Check your reefer fuel. It's almost full. Skirts, look for damage on the side of the trailer, stuff like that. So this is where you can get back here. And you can hear air pushing into the trailer. got the auto fills on them so even if you get kind of a thud out of the tire for a minute you know the air is engaging they will fill up just want to make sure you don't hear any hardcore leaks now getting underneath look at all the cross members you know make sure all the air lines under here and stuff are all good to go you can check your brake pads brake chambers everything like that right way make sure everything's intact you know and then it looks good I have to slide the tandems up in a few. Make sure you got a mud flap, it's all properly uh, mounted and everything's not bent. You know, it's not stuck underneath the tire or anything like that. When you get back here, you see lights, you got these. And then, you can see like this light right here? It's yes. got three LEDs out. Yeah. It's an older trailer. Make sure your license plate, make sure that light is working. That's actually a DOT thing too. People don't think about it. Don't think about it. So you want to check the trailer, make sure it doesn't have anything inside of it. What the fuck is that? That's it. in Salt Lake anyways. So, oh, what I was going to point out. I just see this shit all the time. I didn't talk about it. You shoot for the reefer. That's where the airflow comes in. So you want to make sure that's all intact all the way down. Look at the walls and stuff like that. Look at the floor. You see there's garbage up there. You know, some wood from the pallets. They unloaded it. It's just a little messy, but no big deal. I'm not going to worry about this 
trailer too much because we're taking it to the yard. They're gonna check everything out there and then they'll put it in the shop to fix it. Um, flat. Got a fucking flat. I already saw the bee when I walked over here. Yeah. Fuck. Now we got a fucking flat. It's great. <laughs> or anything you're not gonna throw that tire so it's like eh. but we're gonna do the right thing safety is gonna prevail <laughs> now the thing is old school trucking right they would run that shit I don't give a fuck you know like they don't want the bill right you know you better run that shit you ain't fucking wait for no tire guy to show up bring that shit to the yard <laughs> Nowadays, though, safety, safety, which, you know, I get. It's cool. I don't, right? I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying. So, that's pretty much checking out a trailer. I like that shit. After I fueled, uh, what was that? The day before? Yeah. Before I fueled in Virginia. Yeah, the fuel cap came off. Fuel cap popped back off. Got to our next stop, so there was fuel all over the place. Like, Shit! Alright, so that's pretty much it. Eh? Yeah. Let's go. Still filming? Yeah. 22 minutes for all this shit. Yeah. Anywho. It's not bad for all that. Yeah. That's pretty much it. We gotta call in the uh, tire now and see what they want us to do. They may tell us to bring it to the yard. Who knows? So. All right, good times. Oh, I guess I can turn this piece of shit back off. It's going to the yard anyways, who gives a shit? Booyah. So, uh, yeah, I gotta get a hold of fucking dispatch now. All right, so, that's it. Good times. We're out, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> so we got this uh, shipbox trailer. We uh, goddamn fucking sun, dude. I want to live in Seattle. We uh, waited a few minutes. Some air kind of got back into the tire, so should be alright. Looks like it's actually. I was my concern was the tire was totally off the beat, so I was afraid air was just going to come out around it. You no know, flat tire, the, the little auto inflators, yeah, they will fill it back up, but the tire was totally off the beat, man. Was, <laughs> looks like it'll be all right, though, fuck it. We're just going down to the yard anyway. It's not gonna, I ain't waiting around two hours for a tire guy. Fuck that. Right, yeah, the yard's 30 miles away. Yeah, the yard's a half hour away. We'll just go over there. So, anyway, we're hooked up. We're good. Yep. She did her back job with 17 pull-ups. in there all purdy and straight. <laughs> and I didn't hit anything. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so as per request from some people, we put a trailer in the hole, show you how to unhook and hook up to a trailer, and you got to see some of the shit you get to deal with sometimes that you find junk in the trailer that doesn't even belong there. Right, yeah. <laughs> that one E-Track load bar, it's like... And it was even broke. It didn't even have the E-Tracks on it, so... <laughs> It's just gonna be scrap, you know, it's gonna be shit they throw away. 
um, and a tire was flat. You know, that shit happens all the time. Or when you pick it up, the reefer doesn't work right, or something like that has a malfunction or whatever. Stuff you gotta deal with every day. All the time. All the time. So. <laughs> anyway, I guess that's about it. Yep. Let's get the fuck out of here. Hi. Right. Hi. Right. With turquoise and real diamonds. Ha, ha, ha.